Okay, so I have to do a redo now, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're going to have an image. We're going to have the George O'Keefe image, right? And um, everybody should have a canvas uh, with four sides. I have a board, and you guys are going to paint the sides of the boards. And then this stuff right here, this uh, shiny stuff, uh, shiny on one side and dull on the other, that's the carbon paper. And the carbon paper, we want to use shiny side down, okay? We'll get to that in a minute. And then, of course, we have some tracing paper as well, right? And then over here, we have uh, your number 14 brush here. Let me move this out of the way. We have your number 14 brush, which is the flat brush, and then the round brush, which is the 12. And they both came in the little tube. And you have a palette knife. And you have little containers of paint. You should have yellow, or you should have red, white, yellow, and blue, and white. Oops, I did that already. Yeah, well, uh, should be one more. I don't know. Shelby, what do we have in there? Black. 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 Okay, black. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. And then, um, yeah, some paper towels would be nice. So get, get enough paper towels, because usually what happens is by the time you get done painting, your one little paper towel turns into this one little wet, color, colorful ball in your hand. You know? So you want to have plenty of paper towels. And then also you want to have a container of water or two. I usually have two because I like to put my dark colors, my um, warm colors in one and my um, cool colors in the other. And of course, a pen or a pencil to do your traceable. So with this painting, we're just going to go ahead and do um, all of our lines at once because we paint in sections. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my carbon paper. Now, as you can see, I've used this a couple times. It's a little beat up, but that's cool. Carbon paper you can use over and over again. Don't throw it away. I'm sure there's some kind of project in your house. <laughs> you're you're going to come across and go, oh, I got that carbon paper, Cheryl, baby. You know? So keep that handy. You can use it over and over again. So we're going to place this um, shiny side down on your palette. Shiny side down. Say that again. Shiny side down, everybody. Because if you do it the wrong way, you know what will happen. You won't get anything on your canvas. It will be on the back of your tracing paper. Okay, so I'm lining up my carbon paper with the left edge of my um, canvas. And then I'm just laying that tracing paper right on top, flush with the edge. Okay, so you're going to see some places where your line is going to extend beyond the trace, the carbon paper underneath. That's okay, because we can pretty much imagine where those lines go. Or you can just move your sliders tracing paper over a little bit and complete the line. But either way, okay, we'll start on the left hand side, right? So just take your left hand and put it down on your um, tracing paper and carbon paper. And then we're going to move from the left to the right, or you can go from the right to the left, whichever one is more comfortable for you. And you don't need a lot of pressure, just kind of a medium pressure, not too heavy. Um, but it really doesn't matter because we absolutely just paint right over these lines anyway. But yeah, these are going to be our guides for color. And I really enjoy the, this Georgia O'Keeffe painting. It just, it's so beautiful. Uh, whether you're looking at it close up or from 10 feet away, it's just a attention grabber. So yeah, just keep your lines kind of fluid, try not to press too hard. And then just follow this around. And don't worry if your lines aren't exact. And if your paper starts to follow your pen, just lift up and start again. Nice and easy. And yeah, let's have a trivia question. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's break the ice. 
So you guys all in like the same section of California or are you spread out? We are proximate and work together. <coughs> Did you say approximate? No, yes. proximate, close to each other. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, in the COVID times. Gotcha. <laughs> all right. We're, we're all kind of working differently because of COVID, but we originally all were working in the same, <laughs> the same <laughs> location, and now we're a little bit spread out because many of us are working remotely. So it's a little bit of a trick question. Huh. <laughs> um, so what do you, but, so I don't, it's like to ask people, like, do you like it better working at home or do you miss the commute so much that you'd like <laughs> to go back to it? <laughs> it's the community. Yeah, we miss, I definitely miss the community. We miss being together. Miss being together. Yeah. That's hard. But, like, couldn't you see each other once a week and be happy working from home? <laughs> I just wonder. I don't miss the commute, but the community is what I miss. Oh, the community, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so we got that trivia question. So which TV show has the most seasons? Was it The Family Guy, Law and Order, The Symptom, Simpsons, the symptoms <laughs> or a Grey's Anatomy. Which TV show had the most seasons? Law and Order. The Simpsons. Simpsons. We, I, I have to say, even though it's probably wrong for the medical community, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Interesting. And the answer is The Simpsons. Wow. 32, that's like 32 years, right? Oh, is it? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Been coming on since I was little. That's a long time. time. That's got to break some record somewhere. OK, so when you want to check to see if all of your lines have transferred, just keep everything where it is in one spot. Move your hand to one side and then just lift up a corner before you take the whole thing off. You can see if you miss something, okay? So it looks like I got everything. It's like all my lines are filled in. So the first thing we're gonna do is mix, we're gonna use my favorite color, phthalo blue, and we're gonna take some yellow and we're gonna start on the uh, right-hand side. Or no, we're gonna switch it up this time. We'll start over on this side. Because that way, because if we start on this side and move this way, then our hand is going to get all oh, in the paint. <laughs> so we're going to start on this side. And uh, we're going to take some white. We're going to take some, take our little container of white paint and grab that palette knife. And we're going to go over to my palette tray over here and put down some white. And I'm gonna put quite a bit down. Okay, it's like two little containers, little spoonfuls. And I'm gonna cut it in half. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna cut it in half. Because we're only gonna be painting this small section over here. Okay, so now I'm wiping my palette knife off. You should wipe it off before you go to your next color, which will be yellow. And we're gonna put, we always put the paint down next to the next color, not directly into it. So we're gonna put some yellow down. And I have a little green, but that's okay. Just put some yellow down to the side. That's probably a lot more yellow than I need. So you could put down like half of that. And then last but not least, we're gonna pick up some phthalo blue. And we're going to put that next to the yellow. Okay. And okay, now I'm wiping off my palette knife again. 
So the first thing I'm going to do, the first color we're going to mix, pull over here for a second. The first color we're going to mix is over in here. So this is going to be a kind of yellowish white, and later on we can put some blue in if we want. But the first color we're going to make is like this eggshell white, and we're going to cover this entire area with that. Then we're going to move to the next portion, which is going to be this yellowish uh, green, and then et cetera, et cetera, all the way around. Right. So we're going to pick up some yellow first. We're going to mix our first green. And I'm taking just like a, that's like, I don't know, a half a teaspoon of yellow. <laughs> you have a baking reference. And then I'm going to pick up just a little bit of blue and add to that. So you see how much blue I added? There's like a little dot of blue, right? And then just mix that together. So that's wonderful green that we get from mixing these two colors. So that's one of our greens. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit more yellow. And I'm going to mix a third green, the second green, sorry. I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue, just like before and mix that into the yellow. This time it should be a little bit darker. So if you add just a little bit of the blue to the yellow at a time, and just make sure you're like dividing that yellow up so you can have three different colors. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more blue because I want that even darker. So that gives us our third blue, or I'm sorry, what am I keep saying? Blue is green. And then of course we got a darker green, but we're gonna play that one by ear. I'm just gonna put this blue over here so that when we get ready for that darker bluish green, it'll be right there. Okay, so you should have two, three colors now. We got just plain old yellow. We got like a lime green yellow. And then we have a deep, like a phthalo blue, a phthalo green right here. Everybody okay with mixing that? Anybody got questions? I'm a mess already. I'm a mess already. <laughs> yeah, I am too. <laughs> okay, it's you're okay. a mess it's already. Gonna be, it's okay. Okay, so <laughs> do I need to do that again? No, no, no. No, I mean, no. I mean, no, no. I'm I'm you guys are okay? <laughs> Just yeah. make mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear where you are though. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do now is to mix that eggshell color. So now you see how much white I have right there. I'm just going to take a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of yellow. You see, take a look at how much yellow I'm putting to the white. This is how we always mix colors, ladies. Always mix colors like this. Never try to do like you know, red and blue make purple equal parts. It just doesn't work that way. It's always like a little formula. If you ever went to the uh, hardware store and asked for a, a specific color for a room, they have like <laughs> 50 different numbers of percentages of this and that color because it's such a, a little science. Okay, so I'm gonna add just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit more because I just wanted to pop a little bit more. So I'm adding, look how much more, like you can barely see it. And that's gonna change that just enough to give it a little brightness. Oh. Uh-oh, who had the aha moment? <laughs> I was mixing that completely separately. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, yeah, you keep the colors separately. Separate, I mean. All right, so now I'm ready to grab my number 14 brush, my trusty number 14. Or actually for this one, I think we'll do just the number 12 brush, okay? So that's the one that's round. So just dip that in some water. And then we're gonna take a couple of drops of that water and just drop a couple in there. So we have some a nice consistency, not too much, just like a little drop drop or two. So we want it to be the consistency of ink. Okay, so that, that looks good. 
looks tasty. All right, it's like, like a cake batter or something. All right, so I'm just gonna pick this corner with that nice creamy color. Are we recording this? <laughs> and then the next color I'm going to pick up is my uh, lime green color that's right next to this color, right? So it's right, well, it's right next to this color on the painting and then a little further away on the palette, but it's the lime green. And I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that lime green on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to start at the top. And I'm going to kind of push it into that yellow that I just put down. That eggshell little yellow. I can't talk today. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, so it's kind of wet on wet paint. You're just using that green right next to it. So it kind of melds together. OK. So now I, I think I'm okay with uh, changing my brush. I'm, I'm going to change. You can keep going with this brush if you like. I like my number 14 better. I'm gonna show you how to use it so you like it too. The number 14 brush is great for making straight lines because it has this chiseled edge. It's just like um, wh when you're using it, you want the end of it to look like a chisel. Like if you're gonna scrape ice off of something. Can you see that okay? So, mm -hmm. Okay, so you see, see that? So it should be very chiseled. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna pick up some of that cream that I had before, just a little bit, and I'm gonna go pick up some of my lime green. I'm gonna go back over to the top because now it should be a little more concentrated. And now I'm gonna just push that into the color that's next to it. So this wet on wet technique is what you're shooting for. So as each color goes down, make sure it's nice and wet so that when you put the next color down, they can blend in together. So we're gonna be going up to the top here. We're gonna to go up to the top here eventually, but we're working our way up there. And as we get closer to this color here, that means we're gonna be adding more blue. So watch as this develops, it's interesting. All right, so I'm gonna to go to my next green now, my slightly darker green. I still got the previous green in my brush and I'm doing that wet on wet thing where I'm just kind of laying it down next to the previous color. And if you lighten your stroke, you can blend those two lines together. So don't press hard right now. This is where you just want a light stroke. So I don't know about the rest of everybody, but I'm way behind. I'm way, way, way behind too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me see. Let me see what you're working with, ladies. How about if you uh <laughs> make my screen a little bigger so I can see how to help you? Hold on just one second. Well, I'm at the first green. Me too. Okay, that's fine. You paint at your own pace. Oh. <laughs> and we are. Let's see. Let me make sure. Uh, just you said take the color down to the edge. Should we take? Yeah. The color so we are recording color? this. So um, if Great. anyone you know feels like they just want to just watch and you know soak into the process and and work at their own pace, there's always that recording to refer to later. But yeah, I'm happy to stop and let you know. Okay. So Judy, so you see where your green and your yellow meet. I want you to yeah. take your number 12 brush, wet it a little bit, and then just lightly touch between those two colors, okay? Rinse out your brush. Okay. Rinse Is out your the brush. Flat one? The flat one? Yeah, the flat one. And then I want you to do this. I just want you to make sure there's not too much water on your brush, and then just lightly pull your brush along that line. And it'll help it meld into the other line. Yeah, I see. Okay. So we're melding the dark, the brighter green with the yellow? 
Yeah, so see how it goes? Okay, so when we start, we started out with the with the yellow, right? With the eggshell color. Uh, uh -huh. And that, that's what came first. Yes, that's what came first. Then, after we got that down, I went and I took the paint that was already on my brush and I picked up some of the green. And I kept the other paint that was already there on my brush. And then I just kind of overlap paint, paint it over that yellow, real light strokes. Don't press so hard that your brush bends in half. You should just be barely touching the canvas. Okay, just nice long sweeping strokes. Long sweeping strokes. Okay. Then I'm leaving the same paint on my brush and I'm going back and picking up some of my next darkest green. And I'm laying that down. Really light stroke. If you're not getting enough paint on your canvas, it could be because you're not adding water. So make sure you add some water to your paint. Drop it into your brush. Okay. And see, Albert, let's see. And let me see yours. Mine? Okay, good. Yeah. So now all we have to do, okay. So you want to take a wet your brush and then try to blend those two lines together. Okay. All right. Okay. I see Shelby's got another trivia question up there. I think the answer, oh yeah, I know I was going to answer because I've been up here for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Which pop star is the godmother of Elton John's sons? Cher, oh. Lady Gaga, Jennifer Lopez, or Madonna? Cher. 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 Huh. Yeah. Cher. Yeah, I don't know those answers. Madonna. <laughs> Is that right? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Lady Gaga. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> All right. Oh, nice. No, they were down like that. <laughs> so now, so someone had a, a held up some very bright green. I don't remember who it was, but that's good because the next color that we're going to go into now is this last color, and that's our darkest green. And how we get that is just by picking up a little more blue and adding it to that darker green that we mixed previously. So we're going right here. And then melding this third color in. And if you're not, if you're getting little white spots in between your color when you paint, that just means you need a little more water. And last but not least, we're gonna add just a teeny tiny little bit of black to our darkest green mixture. So it looks like this, it's super dark green. And then I'm just gonna grab my, uh-oh. I'm gonna grab my black and add a little to my palette. Okay, and it's a super small amount. Okay, so if we look at what's on the tray, it's just a very little dot of black. Just a little dot of black. And normally I would use my palette knife to blend that in, but I didn't this time. And now I'm going right up to the edge here. This is my darkest green. And I don't feel like it's quite dark enough. I'm gonna add a little bit more black. So you see why it's easier to just add a little bit at a time 
then you can keep getting, keep going till you get the black or the color that you want. And the trivia question is, what is the most common birthday in the United States? Is it February 14th, July 21st, September 9th, or November 23rd? Which one is the most popular birthday? July 21st. We got a July 21st. Any other guesses? Um, um, September 9th. November 23rd. November 23rd. I'm on after Valentine's Day. Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> she thought about that answer. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> And the answer is September 9th. Oh. Uh, Virgos are rolling. Virgo, <laughs> yeah, you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even suggest a Virgo, but Glamaris. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm hitting the side. I turned my canvas around because sometimes you need a, the right angle in order to get what you want to get done, done. So feel free to flip your canvas upside down. I'm gonna use my 14 brush. Now I'm going in for this dark, dark green over here. So I'm putting my 14 against that edge and just pulling it in a straight line. And then I'm gonna push these two colors together while they're wet. Real light, long strokes. Wait, is that black or is that with the line or is that that dark green that you're using for the line? This is dark green. It's oh. it's green. It's the darkest green that we made. We added more blue to it to give it this darkness. And then I added a smidgen of black to make it even darker. Okay. And when I say a smidgen, you know, I mean a, a smidgen. because it's a super intense color. So it only takes a little bit. I'm adding a little water. Does my paint feel a little dry there? <laughs> and then just nice light strokes. Don't press too hard. And then I'm gonna finish the top of this off. Very light stroke, so. So we know that, <laughs> ah, trivia question. What is the only edible food that never expires? Is it white rice, honey, rye, or barley? What is the only edible food that never expires? It's the second choice. I think it's oh. honey. Yeah. Honey. <laughs> Money on money. Money. That money sounds kind of unanimous. Money. And the answer is ding, 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 honey. Yay. <laughs> it is said to have been found in Egyptian tombs. Gosh, wow. Still intact. Oh. I have a question, Cheryl. <clears throat> Yours looks so nice and like gradual um, mm -hmm. shading. Yeah. Mine looks more like stripes. Okay. So what let's talk about wrong? that, right? Let's talk about that. So the trick to that is wet on wet and overlapping. So okay. um, let me see if I can demo it on another piece. Um, mm -hmm. Here, I'm just going to demo. I'm going to do a demo, you guys. Stop what you're doing if you're having trouble. This is watercolor paper. Hopefully it'll work. But here, so the trick to blending, I'm going to start with the cream because that's where we started. I'm going to just make a straight line and it's wet, right? So I'm going to add some yellow to this. Just gonna add a little bit of yellow right next door to it, right? 
Now, I have a hard line between my yellow and my white. How do I erase that line and make it look gradual? You have to rinse your brush out in its entirety. Rinse um, it out. Okay. Touch your brush to your uh, paper towel to drink out the excess. Don't ruin the tip. Just lay it on there lightly, like so. Okay. Now take the brush and just lightly graze that area. Turn your brush over again and graze it again. Okay. Okay, so light strokes will give you the gradual look that you're looking for. Okay. Thank right. you. Hold on. I'm going to take it another step. So I'm going to go pick up some green now. And I'm going to lay it right next to this color. <laughs> Oops, give me a little bit more water. And I'm gonna rinse out my brush all the way, no color. And then I'll just lay it on my paper towel, let the paper towel drink out the excess water. And then I'm gonna go back over those lines really lightly. I'm not pressing down hard. I flip my brush over. And I'm wiping off my brush now on the paper towel. Okay. So you see, it's like you're trying to marry the lines. You're trying to marry them. And then last but not least, let's go get some of that darker color. This may be too dark um, for it to be like a gradient, but because it should really, really be next to this color. But I've dried off my brush, I've tapped off the excess water. And now I'm just lightly grazing over that. I'm wiping off that paint off my brush, I'm going back again. So you see how that looks a little more gradual? Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, well, let's get a trivia question up there. Yeah. What we got, let's test these ladies out, see what they got. <laughs> All right, so let's, where are my wine heads at? Which type of French wine is typically made from Pinot Noir grapes? Is it a Chianti, Burgundy, Malbec, or a Shiraz? Ooh. Burgundy. Uh, but what did you, what was the question? Oh. Which type of French wine is typically made from Pinot Noir grapes? Chianti, Burgundy, Malbec, or Shiraz? Burgundy. Yeah, one Burgundy. Burgundy. Three Burgundies, I heard. Burgundy. Three Burgundies, okay. Four Burgundies. Yeah. Four Burgundy. Burgundy. <laughs> Burgundy boom. <laughs> Room temperature, please. Yes. Good hey. job. It's a burgundy, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> okay, now you're making me want a glass of wine. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go backwards now in the other direction. So this time, uh -oh. this is where we're going. The first thing we're gonna do is lay down some white or some of our cream color, that eggshell we mixed before. We're gonna put some of that in here and then we're gonna put some yellow. So let's do that first. So I'm actually going to start with Girl. white. So make sure you're going to some pretty clean water. You need to change your water. Go ahead. But can, you, can you, Cheryl, can you throw the dirty water down the drain? Um, you can. I, I throw it outside sometime too in the summer. So um, yeah, I always 
throw it down the drain. I'm probably not, you know. <laughs> I have not had any problems. My husband has yelled at me about it, so. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, so we're going to start with white over in the corner, and then we're going to go into our cream and then a little yellow. But I think we'll probably take the eggshell oh, like right about underneath where the little flower stem starts. Yeah, environmentally, there's supposed to be a way that you can like do it. There's, I just, that's so funny that you asked me because I just saw an article about a new product that just came out that you put into your water before you dump it. But yeah, yeah, I know Shelby's like, what? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Just saw it the other day. So actually, that's a really good question. All right, so I'm gonna go over to my white with my number 14. And yeah, you should have your reference images right there so you can look at it and go, okay, how can I make this look like this, All right? We're gonna start up in the upper left-hand corner with the white, right? We already got our other colors mixed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that all the way around to the tip. So watch where I'm going. So same place in the original, we're just following this line. We're in Georgia's space. Imagine she was actually doing these same moves that we're doing right now. Probably with a lot more skill, but still. <laughs> we're in her artist space right now. Now I'm gonna pick up some of that eggshell-y color that we made before. And I'm gonna add that in next. Okay. So, and that was a really good question, uh, Tammy, about mixing, you know, how to make those blends happen. And they happen best when the two paints that you're trying to blend are wet. In fact, it's, it's darn near impossible to do it when your paint is dry. Okay. okay so I'm, I'm in here with my eggshell color, and I might even want to pick up a little more yellow just to bring that contrast up a little bit, just a tiny bit more. And I'm going to mix it into my yellow so it's not too bright. There we go. Now I'm going to go in and pick up some more of my um, lime green that we made before. And I'm going to start at this edge, and we're just estimating. Now we won't be able to exactly duplicate what she did, but we're mimicking the masters. We're not, you know, trying to make a photocopy. So as close as we can get is fine. So here's our yellow, our greenish color on top of that white that we just placed down. And now let's wet the tip of your brush and pick up a little bit of that darker green. So yeah, it's a slow, gradual process. Just think of you're marrying all of the colors on your palette in this piece. So vermilion is a shade of which color? Is it blue, green, purple, or red? Vermilion. Is a shade red. color? Red. 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 Yep. Oh, yeah. What kind of red is vermilion? Is it really dark or really light? Or is it special? I, somewhere in the middle of the road, like with orange, do you think? Is that more orange? It's bright. As opposed to blood red like darker, deeper. Okay, so you know you're <laughs> playing with that. <laughs> People who are interested in color, when they ask that question, we've never had that question before. <laughs> People were guessing like green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the flower in our painting. 
So yeah. So I made a little boo boo over here. I'm going to show you how to create correct a boo boo when you have one. So I got a little bit of my um, lime green on my dark green. And something you should also know about acrylic paints is that um, you typically need more than one layer to get the results you want. So the uh, okay, so what I was showing you is you take your number 14 brush, you rinse it off completely, you let the paper towel drink out the excess water from your brush, and then you just kind of rub it on the line that you're trying to erase. And it acts just like a little eraser. And we'll lift that color right off. Sometimes with a little paint, but that's okay. Then you can just go back and you can fill in that little space with the color that should be there. So in this case, it's my darker green. So I can just fill that in. So what I was saying was um, acrylic paint, just the nature of it, you have to do more than one coat. So, and typically paintings, oh, I can attest to this, they look ugly before they look pretty. So just have patience with yourself and don't you know, give up, just keep going. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Just keep going. All right, so now I'm gonna go and pick up some of this yellow. We're going for this little area right here. So I'm gonna start it down here. I'm just gonna go pick up some yellow. And then we're gonna overlap this yellow with some green. So we're going to be doing a lot of yellow and green and green and yellow, white and green. Then we get to paint red. That's our reward. <laughs> so just, vermilion. What was that? Vermilion. Yes, yeah, some vermilion. That's right. And when you get to paint that color, oh, so soothing. See all that contrast happen. All right. I'm going to pick up a little more green. So yeah, so at this point, we're looking at our reference in, image and then just trying to kind of match what we're seeing. And then I'm adding my green on top of the yellow. And oh, I forgot to mention hair dryers. Any of you guys have hair dryers nearby? Yep. Okay, cool. Because we're going to use it. Because right here, this is an area where we'll have to do more than one layer. And again, make sure you're using really light strokes okay, when you get into these areas. Because you don't want to um, be putting your paint down and then pressing so hard that you lift the paint off. So that's why your strokes need to be really light. Okay. okay, so which artist sold the most albums in a single day? Was it Whitney, Beyonce, Elvis, or Michael Jackson? Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson. Michael. Two Michaels. Beyonce. Michael. Beyonce. Michael. Elvis. <laughs> Elvis. And Elvis. And the answer is Elvis. The day after he died. Oh. Yes. Wow. Oh, yes. That was a lucky guess. <laughs> <laughs> You know, people go into buying frenzy, frenzies the day after someone dies. Oh, yeah. especially these days. Okay, so um, we're still going to do wet on wet right now. So, all right, <laughs> you're painting. You're trying to see a shape. There are certain things you can draw, but there's certain things that you need to see. So just stop for one second. I want you to try to see this, right? So we got this little area underneath the stamen of the flower, right? And it's darker under there because this thing is casting a shadow there. So the color green should be darker 
under there. You see how it's darker? Our darkest green is right underneath there. And that's what helps to give this piece dimension is how she used the darker green here. So then we come out and we see this shape, this dark shape. So we try to reproduce that by just making some light strokes that lay on top of our previous green and our yellow. And then just kind of blend it into the side. And then our next color will be super dark. And that'll make this area pop out. Okay, so here I've started my little ascent down. Okay, I'm seeing this and I'm seeing that I need to bring my darker green out a little bit more. Real light strokes. And I'm angling my brush to the side, kind of half laying it down. And I'm going further down because I'm seeing that this shape is going down that way. And now I think what I want to do is rinse my brush. And I'm going to pick up some of my lighter, my lime green, come back in underneath here. And then I'm going to work on trying to blend those two colors. So can you see this? See this shape? So don't let like this part get you down. This is artist <laughs> growing, artist growing pain right here. <laughs> yeah. You're trying, to, you're trying to see shapes that you don't normally look for. Okay. Oh, and just to give you an example, let me draw them out so you can see it even better. You're looking for this shape right here. That's what you're looking for. And right here, you just want to make sure your green is dark underneath here, right up to there. Right? This is horrible. And then we have our lime green is sitting right here on top of that yellow. Okay, so I'm just trying to duplicate. Mine doesn't look exactly like that, but I'm trying to use the brush strokes necessary or the, the color combinations necessary to just duplicate those shapes. And if you just concentrate on duplicating those shapes, use the side of your brush like this, and you'll have something you're proud of. So I'm gonna rinse this off and I'm going to let the water, uh, the paper towel drink the excess water out. And then I'm gonna go back over here, which is a little dry. So I might have to add some more green down. And my uh, paint up here is kind of dry. So I'm gonna have zero luck uh, blending this in unless I wet you know, all this over again. So I'm going to take a little water and add some lighter green. And our trivia question is, what is the highest grossing film of all time, including inflation? Is it the Titanic, the Avengers Endgame, Avatar, Star Wars, or, or Star Wars, The Force Awakens? Which one? Titanic. Titanic. Endgame. 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 I wanted to Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. Endgame. A lot of variety in those answers. And the answer is Avengers. Oh, wow. Endgame. Who's yeah. the Avengers? I love the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that a comic book geek. Yeah, I am. I grew up watching, reading all of those comic books. <laughs> I love DC Marvel and definitely. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, so if anybody has that problem that um, Tammy mentioned earlier, it's just um, if you, you cannot blend 
an area that's dry. So if you have to go in and try to duplicate the same paint you had in that very spot, then go ahead and put that down. Then you'll be able to blend the two colors together. And now I think I'm gonna hit that little area one more time with some dark paint or with my darkest blue or green. <laughs> Just right under there. Tap, 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 tap. All right. So let me see what you guys are working with. I'm, I'm feeling. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, hold on. I can't see anything. Okay, all right. Oh, there you are. Okay. All right. Good job. Okay, yeah, some blending. Ramona, you gotta get some blending over there with that wet <laughs> tooth, oh, toothbrush. Paintbrush. No, I think that you did a good job. Yeah, you improved, Tammy. Okay, here's here, Ramona. Let me see yours again. That's good. Good job, Judy. Yeah, we got to get you with the blending strokes there. I'm the blending, though. Yeah, I got to get the blending. <laughs> a little bit more. No blending. Working off. Because you're showing it between. So here. Mm. Did you, and then did you, you see that demo that. last time? Yeah. Should I do it for you again? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do it for I you again. I'm the version of that. <laughs> I'm going to do it for you again. So look at look at these. See now, this is what you want, right? So we're going to do two colors this time. I'm going to do yellow and just plain blue. All right. We're going to take that number fourteen brush and I'm going to wet this. Here's what might help you. So you wet it, right? I'm wetting it. I'm going to take just some pure yellow. And I'm just going to lay it right down in a straight line. Rinse out my brush. And I'm letting the paper towel drink out the excess water. I'm going to come back with that lime green that I made. Or, or sorry, I'm going to come back with the blue. Sorry, I did say blue. And I'm going to lay that right next to the yellow. So this is what you got working right now. Okay, okay this is you. <laughs> All right, so you can, you can fix this if you want. So you're gonna go back, you're gonna rinse that brush out completely. We're gonna let, lay it on your paintbrush. You let the paint, the paper towel drink out the excess water. Well, I, I let it drink too much here. Let <laughs> me go back again. So drink out most of it. And then I'm just going to lay my brush right in between and just pull real lightly. And I can probably wiggle it a little bit. Let me wiggle it. Just wiggle it just a little bit. Okay. And wipe that off with your paper towel. Get a little bit more water. Let the water, the paper towel drink out the excess and then do it again light, super light strokes, right? And then just wiggle it just a little bit. Right after you wiggled it. <laughs> Come on, somebody sing that song for me. All right. Um, then just take your brush and, and just kind of lightly stroke. So you get these two lines merging together. Okay. So then it's not so much night and day as it is a gradual blend. Does that help? Yeah, that is very, very helpful. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, it's not something you learn in two hours, you know? So the fact that you wanna get it right speaks a lot. And then you could just try, try again. Okay. Try again. All right, so 
I have my little section right there done. Oh, I forgot to blend. I let my paint dry. I forgot to blend. All right, all right, well. Uh, okay, well. I'm just going to put the flat side of my brush and hope for the best. I'm leaving it just like that, too. All right, so uh, um, the next color we're going to blend is this super dark, like Mississippi mud green, right? Going down here underneath um, this area of the flower and up top, right? That's our next color. So we're gonna start with the yellow that we already have, or in my case, that I already have. And I'm gonna take about half of that. And then I'm gonna put about half of the blue. So 50-50, it's giving me that, that lime green from before, so I know I'm gonna need more. I'm going to go ahead and pick up some more blue, add that in, right? So if, you, um, you, if you're doing something else, stop for a second so you can see how to mix this, all right? All right, so we've got our yellow, and I've taken half, so I'll do it again. I've taken half about this much, and I'm going to do a 50-50. I'm going to take that as much blue and add it to that because I know I want a dark green. And so that's giving me a super dark green. I'm wiping off my palette knife and going back into my black now. And I'm just adding a little bit of black, tiny bit. So in relation to the paint that I have all of, already down, it's just a small amount of black. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in together. This is gonna give me a deep dark green. And if not, I'll just add some more blue and some more black. I'll add a little bit more black to the side first and then directly into the color. And I think I want some more blue. So um, your job as a color mixer here is just to keep adding your colors until you get the deep color that you're looking for. And then I, I think I have the one blue that I want, so I'm going to put that one to the side. And then I'm going to add some more black to the other so I can get that upper left-hand corner dark Mississippi mud black green. Oh, there. I think I'm going to hit it uh, one more time. I think I'm going to hit it one more time with some black because it's almost black. So I've got two shades of green that I'm making. Of course, you gotta keep your, do a better job of keeping your colors separate than I am. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna dry off this palette knife. Now we're coming in for some dark, dark green. I'm going in and wetting that brush. I'm going to pick up the, my lighter green first. Okay. And I'm going to go underneath the little flower area here. And the 14 brush is good for helping you make straight lines. And then if this looks like it's kind of tight for you, then go ahead and pick up your number 12 brush instead. Might help you navigate that little small area better. Oops. As usual, I got paint on my elbows. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> 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 Ramona, it looks like you already got a painting in the background. Did you do that one? I did not do that one. Um, my partner did that one. <laughs> oh, it just came with your office? What? Oh, no, I'm not at the office. I'm, I'm at their house. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they have a, a lot of art up, too. Oh, OK. They're actually a real visual artist. <laughs> cool. OK, so which 
animal causes the most power outage? Is it bees, wasps, raccoons, or squirrels? Which animal causes the most power outages? Raccoons. Uh, yeah, I think so too. Squirrels. Squirrels. Raccoons. Uh, I'm pretty sure I know why Shelby did this question. <laughs> and the answer is squirrels. <laughs> It's yeah. squirrels. Surprise, surprise. Shocking. Yes. So we have, uh, you know, not the best internet here in LaGrange, Illinois. And uh, just randomly, my internet would go out. I'd wake up one morning, no internet, and no outages in the area, nothing. The guy comes by, spends uh, an hour on the pole outside. And I'm like, what's wrong? He said, squirrels. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, they always get in the boxes <laughs> and chew their way through why do they not have a fix for this you know uh, we put a man on the moon we don't know how to keep a squirrel out of a box right? what is up with that electric <laughs> oh my god I mean I think they're just like trying to keep people employed or something because there's got to be a fix for that. Uh, you would think. You would think. All right. So I got my pretty dark green down. Long strokes. Just remember to do long strokes. Keep the brush down. Just drag it around. Drag it around. Cool. So I got a little crunchy area over here, so, which will be different from some of the other ones that I've painted. So we'll see how that looks. Um, so, but each time it's a different interpretation. That's okay. All right. Uh, what condiment was sold in the 1830s as medicine? Was it soy sauce, pickle relish, maple syrup, or ketchup? Which condiment was sold in the 1830s as medicine? Oh. Mm. Maple syrup? Maple syrup, yeah. <laughs> no guesses? Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Maple relish. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Okay, and the answer is ding, 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 ding. I know. It's terrible. This gives me heartburn. I'm fixing <laughs> Right? What does it do? What did it fix? So there's a story that said, because you know, we had this question quite a bit, and so I looked it up, and supposedly there was this guy who uh, was going around like a snake oil salesman and selling ketchup and saying it cured everything <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it was just like a tomato sauce mixture of some kind right so people would buy it and they're like well this stuff doesn't work you know but wow it sure does taste good <laughs> so <laughs> it was actually um a, a, a snake oil before it was a condiment so that's uh, funny <laughs> All right, so I still don't feel like my green is getting black enough. It just will not get blacker. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's the black. That's the green I want. It looks like know, green sludge. So I'm going to pick that up. That goes up here in the top of your painting. In this little triangular area. So my first strokes will be right against that line. I just lay my brush against the line and just pull it in a straight line. Nice and easy. You let the brush do the work. Oh, am I in the right place? I 
I don't know. I don't know. I just covered up my thing. Well, I'm supposed to be right here. Don't listen to me. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> uh, I got to erase all that now. Oh, well. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> so, yeah. Just don't do what I did. We're just going for this little triangle in the corner here. And it's all, this is supposed to be that dark green that we just did? Yeah, the super dark green. So it's almost black, this green. And we're just going to curve that around. Okay, so. There, she off quiet. Because I'm focused. <laughs> I know, you get in the zone. Yeah, I was gonna say, I could do one thing at a time. I, I don't know about <laughs> social yeah. activity at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not even sure I'm doing, I'm at the exact right spot, but oh, I can't see it. Darn. Yeah. yeah, I kind of blew my line here. So you see, I'm erasing it with my 14. I'm yes, going yes, in, yes, yes. my brush off and just kind of laying it on that edge and erasing it like that. I don't know how to take my wait, I saw right when you went right in front of your face, it went. I could see a, a wisp of oh, green. Okay. There it is. Oh, yeah, I see. Oh, you got blending down. You got the blending down. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's because I'm not, I can't, I'm trying to participate by talking, but it, I think it throws me off. <laughs> I see. You got it down. Okay, maybe I should shut up and just. <laughs> hey, let, let me see yours again. Can I see? Yeah, she's got oh, yeah, it. she's on it. She's on it. She's on it. Good job, Wendy. The rest of us should take the lesson from Damaris. I'm telling no, you. No, y'all just socialize. No, talk, talk. <laughs> Which borough, trivia question here, which borough of New York City is the birthplace of hip hop? Is it Queens, uh, the Bronx, Brooklyn, or Manhattan? Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. I think so. I was like, Brooklyn uh, or the Bronx, I feel I like. Think the like, Bronx, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those Bronx or, yeah, Bronx or Brooklyn. Definitely not my hand. It's the Bronx, right? Got the boogie down. Oh. I thought those were fun. I the Bronx. And the answer is the Bronx. Hey, yeah. I, I did. I so what, what can you tell us about Georgia O'Keeffe? Well, wow. So um, I've loved her for a very long time. Um, she specializes in. Uh, paintings that have to do with enlarged areas of the flower, which led people to believe that she was actually painting parts of the female body instead yeah. of flowers. But of course, we can't help because we look like flowers down there, you know? So <laughs> I definitely got that vibe from this painting. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby's like, oh, I don't believe you said that. Well, it's true. I mean, that's what was going on. So, and she was uh, married to a guy named Alfred Stieglitz, who I actually did my senior project on. He was a photographer and he was big on photographing hands. And um, mm -hmm. so anyway, my senior project in uh, graphic arts was on, I photographed hands, just all kinds of different ways. Um, hey. It's very cool. <laughs> it was a very cool project. And um, he has a very famous uh, hands photograph of Georgia O'Keeffe um, being one of his models. Uh, it's just a beautiful way that she held her hands and how he captured it. Um, yeah, so she's American artist and out of Arizona, I want to say. New Mexico. New Mexico. Yeah, one of those hot places. A lot of Georgia O'Keeffe pieces in the house. Who said that? You do? Mm-hmm. That's my father's favorite artist. Awesome. 
There's a lot of pieces in the house. Oh, am I? Oh. It's <laughs> cool, Mom. <Mama. laughs> Okay, so I've got my, um, ooh, I really made that green pretty black up there, man. So that's good contrast going on. Um, then we're, we've got our darker green right here and we're ready to, um, I guess, come in with some lighter green in this area. We'll just, what we'll do is take some white and add it to our dark color and then we'll gradually grow to um, our eggshell, okay? So let's see what happens when I add a little white to my dark green. Uh -oh. Get there. White. Actually, it's the other way around. I'm going to add a little bit of that dark green to my white. Uh -oh. Dark green. And a little bit of yellow. Yeah. And maybe I'll just pick up a little bit of that on the tip of my brush. So I'm going to go right against that edge that I just created. We're going to get a nice blend because it's still a little wet. Yeah, nice and slow. We're just going to go around that edge. And I'm going to wipe off that brush and just pick up some of my lighter green and just go right next to that. And now I'm just going to make this into a V with this darker blue. And we'll hit it with white now. Of course, picking up some of those colors from the edge. So let's just get that with the white. Just kind of blur that together. It's wet on wet. And now it looks like I need to clean because that's not going to blend. It's just going to take that blue all over. So I'm going to clean my brush off and just pick up some white. Who is your favorite painter? <laughs> <laughs> well, we know we got a Georgia O'Keeffe fan in the bunch, or at least her dad. Yeah, I'm Frida Kahlo. That's my favorite painter. Oh, nice. Okay, so you guys, my favorite point painter is Salvador Dali. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a big, um, whenever I'm in St. Petersburg, or it used to be Tampa. Whenever I'm in uh, St. Petersburg, I go to the Dolly Museum. And actually, they have something super new there and super awesome. And it is a 3D go into Dolly's painting experience, hmm. um, virtual reality. So you know how bizarre his paintings are, right? <laughs> so imagine walking around in one of them. Man, they had to pry me out of that chair. <laughs> and I want to get up <laughs> my seat. I got back in line, I don't know how many times. Um, mm. But Persistence of Memory is one of the things that's there. Um, what's the one of the other ones? Um, the ones with the elephants with the skinny legs. It's a really wild experience. And then all these really bizarre sounds are going on while you're in there. Hmm. What was that sound? That was, I thought I was on mute and I just sighed. My should be. Means you're really you're really How are you doing? You're kind of quiet. Totally focused, and I'm struggling with this section here. <laughs> Which section is that? that I, I went green, and it looks more blue, so I mix differently here. 
Uh huh. So did you have to go back and get your color? Vermilion. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. You're already on vermilion. No, no, no. I'm just. Uh, She's ready. ready. For I'm I'm waiting. Oh, you're ready for it. I think it. I'll do oh, better good. mixing with vermilion than. Because uh, it's okay. actually like pretty much the next step. So you could go for ver vermilion, or you could go and finish off your green area first and save the vermilion the best for last. I might have to do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do, because I always like to save the green, the red for last. But you guys, you know, you can march to your own drummer. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to come back over here and pick up some clean water, because I'm picking up white and a little bit of yellow. I'm going to make my little eggshell color. And I, it's very egg showing and it's going right behind me. Maybe a little bit more white. It's going right behind my flower. Got some clean water to add in there. Go all the way out to the edge. So make sure you got a good, nice consistency so your spreadability is fun at this point. And just remember to use that 14, the straight edge of it, to help you make those straight lines. And then we go all the way down to this little V. And then we have another little V in between um, the stems. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> you guys catching my uh-ohs. Uh-oh. <laughs> what was the no, first Pixar movie? Was it uh, Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Monsters, Inc., or Finding Nemo? What was Toy, the Story. First Toy Story. Toy Story. Yeah. Toy Story. Yeah. Toy Story. Toy Story. I love all of those movies. Yep. Yay. Toy Story, yes. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting this little skinny little V area right in between. This is my cream color. And then um, I'm going to hit this with that. Um, second to darkest green I made. So I'm going right here, in here. This is still wet, so this should work really well. And so now my goal is to try to blend that out. So do I keep paint on my brush to keep, to try to blend that? No, I have to rinse my brush out completely from paint <clears throat> and make, make sure it's slightly damp. And now I'm just going to pull that color in the opposite direction. I'm wiping off my brush after each time. Okay. So I'm grabbing and pulling. I'm wiping, rinsing, letting that excess water get soaked out of my brush. And I'm Pulling. You know, pull in. Now I can probably wiggle that out a little bit. Notice how I'm putting my brush almost parallel to the canvas. Now I'm going to pick up a little more green and just hit that corner area again. Because it's dark in here. So that white section between where you are and the corner is that white white or it's, blue it's white? our eggshell. It's the eggshell white. Remind me how you make that. 
you take just plain white. Yeah. I think with just a spit smidgen. So if it was one teaspoon, or even if it was half a teaspoon, then you would add one like dot. <laughs> yeah, one dot of yellow, a dash of yellow to that white. And you just want to tint, it's a tint. You just want to tint that color. All right, so I'm done drying my brush off completely, and then I'm just gonna do a stroke in the opposite direction and blend this lighter blue area into the darker blue area. Very nice and easy, nice and slow. And one more time. I think you've done this before. You think? <laughs> 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 I have I have painted this painting a couple of times. Like a few as a matter of fact. Yes. Like I said, it's one of my favorites and it looks great on your wall. People are like, you did not do that. Yes, I did. I did all by myself. Okay. Okay, Shelby wants to know what's your favorite cocktail. It's here from everybody. What do you wish you had in front of you right now to help you finish this painting? Champagne. Champagne. Nice. Verdi Martini. Ooh. Margarita. Negroni. What was that? Cadillac. Oh, a Cadillac martini. Yes, you must. They'll bring you anything. <laughs> Cadillac martini. Yes, absolutely. What is it? Oh, um, it's, it's like regular. It's regular, but it has a uh, Grand Marnier. That's, That's right. A, That's right. It makes a difference. It makes a big difference. <laughs> yeah. I've had it where they. I've had it where they put Cointreau in too. That's kind of nice. Oh yeah. The same thing. It's like an orange liqueur. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Okay. So oh, I'm behind here. We are going to need some more yellowish green for our last little area here, and we're going to paint our stems. Here and then we can get to the red. The vermilion, I'm sorry. The vermilion. Okay. So I'm just going to move this palette out the way because I just want some new color. I just want some new color. So I'm going to pick up my palette knife. I'm putting down some more yellow. Nice fresh palette. Start all over again. Okay. So we're going back to mixing colors like on the other side of our, what we did over here, we're going to do over here as well. Then we'll have that other big leaf out of the way. And we're on the road to the moon. All right. Well, I'm going to throw a little blue over here. I'm going to take some of this yellow. And I'm going to add a little blue to that. And I got my green. Just love the green that comes from mixing these two colors. We have green. I bought green so that you wouldn't have to mix it, but I like this green so much better, so much prettier. All right. Uh, I'm taking my trusted number 12, I'm sorry, 14 brush. And I'm going to start right up the top. And actually, I think I need to make that a little darker because guess what? That's a little darker than this green. So to do that, I'm just going to pick up a little blue on the tip of my brush. Just on the tip. Then I'm going to add that green that I just made to that. And so that should give me this deeper, darker green that I'm shooting for at the top. So I'm just making my number 14 brush do the work. I'm laying my brush almost parallel to the canvas. And I'm just pulling it down all in that line. Okay. 
I got a little blue in there, but that's okay. Just gonna mix those together. Easy to get in the zone. Which popular Hollywood actor won the Best Actor Oscar in 2016? Was it Johnny Depp, Leonardo DiCaprio, George Clooney, or Matt Damon? Who won the Best Actor? I think it was Leonardo DiCaprio for um, The Reverend. Hmm. Leonardo? Yeah, I think you might be right about that. Yep. Huh. Well, we got a Leonardo guess. And I think they're going to let that one go. <laughs> 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 yes, and it is Leonardo for the Revenant. Is that, is that the one where he um, was sleeping in the bear or something? Yes. Or something? Yes. <laughs> it was based on a true story, which is so hard to imagine. Wow. Crazy. So good guess or a good answer. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pick up some of my yellow and just stab my canvas with it. <laughs> Leave that streaky stuff in there and just make it that yellow just by itself right over here in the corner. Just psh, psh. sometimes you just have to throw paint at the canvas. Just throw it on there. I think you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of painting. <laughs> All right, I'm going back and picking up some of my darker green. And I'm going to cover that in. There we go. Nice long strokes. Nice long strokes. So you don't see the little brush strokes in between. Do you know that, uh, you know, we have the Art Institute here in Chicago, and um, one of my other Painters that I like is Toulouse Lautrec, and we yeah, have one of his like paintings him. there. And um, anyway, just standing in front of it and watching and seeing, you know, he lived in the uh, 1800s, mid 1800s, and just seeing someone else's brush strokes and how he did it's just fascinating. You know, seeing old art like that. It's one of the things that endures. Anyway, um, if cooking in, if you par a carrot, if you pair a carrot, <laughs> if you pair a carrot with a green pepper, what happens? No. Okay, so if you <laughs> pair a carrot, what do you do with it? <laughs> do you chop it, skewer it, peel it, or throw it out? What do you do with a carrot if you pair it? That sounds like a joke in itself, doesn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy E, I've got you know I'm lost here. You uh, these ladies do not hang out. My answer is E, I eat it. Perry. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, okay, let's help them out then. So the answer is peel it. You peel it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna make you suffer just a little bit more before we use the vermilion, okay? So we're gonna do the stems. We're gonna do our left stem first because it has a lighter color and it's probably uh, it's probably dry over here. So we're going to pick up our lighter green and maybe a little bit of yellow. Sometimes you can do this blending that, that gradient technique by picking up two colors at once. Sometimes you get lucky and it just lays the way it should. So we're going to take that combination of yellow and green 
lay our number 14 brush right against the edge and then just pull it straight down all the way to the end of the stem. Nice and easy. Let the brush do the work all the way down. Don't worry about if your line gets a little fatter at the bottom because we're just going to go over it with a darker paint anyway. Nice straight line. And let's do the same thing with the other one. So this is just a base coat. And we're going to come back later and put the dark color down. And that will give the Sims dimension. Hey, I think this is the only time we're going to use the hair dryer. So go ahead and lay down your base color and then pop out your hair dryer. And uh, we'll get our last uh, layer on our stem and then we'll go to vermilion. All right, so we're gonna go incognito for a minute while we blow dry because we don't want you to have to hear that. So we're gonna go mute for a second in the meantime. What's your favorite type of cuisine? Think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I got a quick answer. Real food for me. Oh, this is bad. It's Shanita. <laughs> I bet it's not as bad as you're saying. <laughs> oh, goodness. You're so funny. I'm going to hang, gonna hang this to Andre's room and said he did it in first grade. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well purposed. <laughs> Wait, did we do this part? Did you do this, this, this part here? It's off part one. At the top? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't do that part yet. Am I behind? No, you're not behind. No. <laughs> You've got lots of company. Yes. <laughs> certainly do. Right. That's part. Okay, and we're back. We're all nice and dry now, ready to move on to a new stage in our painting. Um, nope. So ooh, look at that spot, just waiting for some vermilion paint. <laughs> Rubbing my hands together with devilish satisfaction. All right. So, oh, so what did you guys say was your favorite food? Your favorite type of food, cuisine wise? How many people like Mexican food? Raise your oh, hand. Oh, yeah. That's me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's me. That's, that's number one on my list. Just, you can't, you can't uh, mess it up too bad, no matter where you go. <laughs> and there's so many uh, authentic places everywhere. Gosh. All right, um, so yeah, let's whip out that vermilion. And uh, let's see, we're gonna need some black to go with that. And we're gonna need some white. So if you already have some white, you can bring that into the mix again. Uh, but yeah, let's get a nice scoop and get busy. So there it is. 
a beautiful red. And we're going to um, divide that in half. I've got two, we got like a tablespoon down here. We're gonna pull away just a little bit because we got to make some shadow. So we got our main color, which is the vermilion. And then we have shadow color. So that's a darker color inside here. So how do we get that? So we've divided the colors in two. We've got our main color over on the left and then we'll have this shadow color on the right. I'm gonna wipe off my palette knife and pick up some black. And again, we always put that color to the side, not directly into the color. We have to keep measuring it till we get it right. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna need um, probably about that much. And we're gonna make this darker. Okay, that looks pretty good. But I think I might want to go a shade darker. Maybe just a little bit. Nah, yeah, no, yes, <laughs> yes, no, yes, no. Okay, well, we'll play it by ear. Sorry, I think because that feels like kind of brick red to me. Okay, so as you can see by my palette, I have a bright, bright red, and then I have like a Oh, I don't know, like a wineish, like a Cabernet color, right? <laughs> so we got a little Cabernet color over there. I wipe off my palette knife so it doesn't get uh, icky. And let's start up in this upper right hand corner. So we're going to be doing this. We're going to be going like this. We're going to paint all the way around. And then we're going to do wet on wet technique. So once we paint in this area, then we're going to go right back in that area with the dark color. I'm sorry, let me say that again. Okay, so we're going to start off with the red all the way around here. We're going to do all these areas. Then once we get the red down, we're going to go into those corners with our dark wine color. Then we're going to pull it out in this direction so it blends, right? We do the same thing here, go in with that darker color and then pull it out. And as you can see, we have that same kind of thing going on here. So it's better for us to paint all this red first, or at least, you know, start on one side so it stays wet. And then that way, when we put our darker color down, we can just pull, pull it out, wet on wet technique, right? So let's get busy with the red. I'm gonna go ahead and load up my brush, loading both sides, because we got a lot of little area to cover. You don't want lumps of paint on your brush. You want it to be nice and flat, nice chiseled edge. All right. Ooh, so exciting. All right. So here we go along that edge. Put it against the line that you see. Let your paintbrush do the work. Slowly, slowly pull your brush along that line. And then slowly turn it. The dark or the bright red right now? The bright red. The bright red. Make sure you have enough water in your brush and um, you know, mix that consistency on your palette, not on the, the canvas. Mm -hmm. So right now, what I see is that there's a darker area here at the top, right? So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my, my uh, wine color on the tip of my brush. I've still got my brush fully loaded with the other brighter red. So if you look at my paintbrush and you look at the tip of it, I got the wine color on the end, just on the tip, and then I still load it with red. I'm going to go here to the top and I'm going to rotate my canvas because it's more comfortable that way. And I'm just going to put that dark burgundy right against this line. And I'm going to rotate my canvas. And so now what you're seeing is that lighter color. So now I'm going to clean that off the edge of my brush and I'm going to go back to my red. 
And I'm going to go to this little area here. And I'm just going to pull those two colors together. Follow that all the way around. Okay. And I'm all the way down at the bottom. Okay, now if you want to change, I think I will change to my number um, 12 brush. This is a good time to do that. Because we're going into smaller areas now. So I'm going to pick up my, uh, my wine color and I'm going to go right next to that red that I just put down. Now with the number 12 brush, you want to use it so that it has a pointed edge. So if you take a look, you load your brush with paint, but make sure it's a nice inky consistency. It shouldn't be thick and, and laying on your brush like that, because that'll just, you're just going to make a mess. <laughs> so just uh, make sure you have enough water so that it's the consistency of ink. Then twirl your brush, twirl it between your thumb and your forefinger and get that point back like that. So you want to go ahead and lay this color down to that wet paint that you have already down. And then we're going to follow this edge around till we get to that darker area here. And we're just using the very tip of the brush. You're not pressing down hard because if you press down hard, then you're going to go outside of the line. So just Make sure that you're given kind of a light pressure. And now guess what? We're going to go right back to red. And we're going to blend these two colors together. Okay. So now I'm going to rinse off my number 12 brush all the way. It's just slightly damp. And I'm going to just take it and run it along that line that I previously painted to soften it. And now I'm going back to my, my red. I was gonna say red, because I keep forgetting anyway. And right next to that dark line that I put. And the question is, how many grapes go into making one bottle of wine? Isn't it 100, 300, uh, 700, or 900? How many grapes do we need to get a bottle of wine going? 900. 900. 900. Who guesses? 700. 700. Okay, I think we covered almost all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so it is 700 grapes. Yay. Okay, now we're about to come to this other side where we're going to hit that um that dark burgundy again. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I still got this red on the tip of my brush. I mean in the the body of the brush, the belly. And I'm just going to I got too much paint on my brush. I'm just going to go to the edge and follow that around with this darker color because this is what creates the depth. And actually, I guess we can keep going around in a circle kind of like this because this dark color is all the way around. Okay. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna rinse this out again and just go back and get some red right away so I can mix these colors while they're wet. Okay. 
because they won't mix after they're dry. So see how they kind of blend together. And then there's another little burgundy area right here. What flower is an ancient symbol of secrecy? Is it the lily, the Venus flytrap, the rose, or the orchid? Excellent. Flowers is a symbol of secrecy. What's D? Lily. A orchid. Yes, orchid. Yeah, we got orchid, Venus flytrap, lily, and rose. Can we get some guesses? Orchid. Orchid? Oh, okay. I'm going to go with the Venus flytrap. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> And the answer is the rose. Oh. What? That seemed too obvious. I know. So classic. <laughs> I know. I was surprised by that answer, too. OK, so now I'm going back to my burgundy now. Did I forget to go on the edge over here? Well, you know, we always can do more than one coat, so. This does not have to be the end of this. So if, and I highly recommend that because this can be a really beautiful painting, even for someone who's doing this for the first time. But like, I would not, like the way I finished this painting, it needs several layers to make it as beautiful as you want it to be. So um, if you're not 100% satisfied, you'll have the video to, uh, further enhance your techniques and your skills about blending. Just practice blending and you'll master this painting. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm just saying uh, if you didn't blend this the right way, like here, I still can see hard lines. I can go back later and um, do another, another whole coat and you'll get a really brilliant uh, foundation. So Cheryl. Yes. I'm finally catching up. Yeah. Vermilion. So <laughs> how did you make that deep eggplant? How did oh. I how did I make so the you, second um the cabernet color? Yeah, so the first one is what comes out of the container and the second one what did you mix in black? Yes, yes. Yeah. So just remember that we always put the colors next to the color we're mixing into. So we just add a little bit of black at a time, like put one half teaspoon, then you know, we're doing um, more than a dash this time, probably like a 16th of a teaspoon, if that was a measurement, that's what you'd be adding. So if you look at the palette knife here or the palette tray, so this is my yeah. red. I'm going to add probably about this much to it to get that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So I decided I was going to switch to my number 14. Work. I just like it better for doing straight edges. It's a less work for me. So I'm just going to go in here and put down my Cabernet. Now I'm feeling like um, all of my values. So values are, you know, light to dark, right? So I feel like my values in terms of shadows are too similar here. So um, I will probably go and add some black to my already dark um, burgundy because I want more 
want us to look deeper. So if something is really deep, like if you look into a hole, like at the top of the hole, it's really, you can see the edge of the rim of the hole, right? But if you look deeper down, it's like so dark, you can't see anything. So we need to have that kind of thing going on here because we can't really see underneath there. That's really supposed to be dark. So we need to make it a little bit darker. So coming around here, and I think it, I think it actually needs to be dry. Okay, so name a country where you'd like to vacation. Once the world is safe from COVID, of course. Italy. Italy. What did did you say? What lake? Italy. Oh, Italy. Okay. Yeah. Same. yeah. Italy. That's crazy. I want to do Nancy's Africa trip. Oh, yeah. That sounds awesome. Egypt is a place I've always wanted to go. Well, and I just found out that my heritage is Nigerian. So, I, you know, Nigeria is where I'd like to go. I did one of those 23andMe tests. So it's really nice to you know from whence you came. All right. No. I'm gonna, uh, my black thing right there? My black thing right there? All right, so I'm going to be wetting this area here and then doing some wet blending. But I'm going to go back to the other side and hit um, my palette with red first. Oops, let me get this first. I'm going to pick up my burgundy and put it in this area right next to the stain. Or whatever that thing is called. Okay, so I'm going to put it in the Yeah, that should be one of the trivia questions. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most popular holiday? Is it Mother's Day, Halloween, Christmas, or Thanksgiving? Which one is the most popular holiday? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, in what way? Thanksgiving, except Thanksgiving. for San Francisco, and then it's Halloween. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, so a lot of Thanksgiving answers. Oh, it's Christmas. All right, so I got some nice bright red going on here. I think now I'm gonna go back, now that I have all my colors positioned where they should be, now I can go back and fine tune some of these areas. So when I was saying earlier that it's a good idea to put another coat, this is the time where now you can do your really, um, your last kind of um, blending up colors. Your wet on wet technique. I'm gonna pick up some more black and go. So can you see how when I put the darker black color, it kind of makes the whole stain kind of pop out even more. So I'm gonna go right in here and do the same thing. And I'm going to rinse off my brush so I can blend that edge together. So again, a super light stroke. You can almost lay your brush down. And same thing for the top piece. I'm going to 
make this so that it looks deeper inside. And then gradually, I'm going to pick up some more red as I get out towards the outer area. Now, this is one of those paintings where you really get in the zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dying to see how I started. I did a new um, offering of watercolors. And one of the watercolor pieces that we're going to do involves blowing through a straw to splatter the paint. Oh. <laughs> That's going to be interesting having people try to answer trivia questions while they're doing that. <laughs> we got to see how that's going to work. All right, so what's the world's most popular flower? Is it tulips, roses, lilies, or chrysanthemums? Roses. <laughs> roses. 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 Yeah, roses. Yeah. Roses. I agree, I agree. And the answer is roses. <laughs> All right, good job. And now I'm seeing like this little area that should be sticking up, which means I need to put lighter color. I kind of missed that. Um, yeah, like about right here. Well, I can't do it until I dry it off, so I'll wait. And so, yeah. Oh, so we have to do our little stem. Let me go back to our. Um, stems. So I'm just picking up some of my old green, my old friend green, and I'm just going to go on one side. So now we've got this nice light color on one side. That's going to help us give this piece some depth, give the stems dimension. So you can do this with your 14 or your 12, whichever one it feels more comfortable to you. And then our goal is to kind of create a difference between, I think I'm gonna use the number 14 or give me a straight line easier. So I'm gonna get this in a little black and a little green. Make sure there's not too much water. Okay, I'm going to turn this over and then just going to put this real nice and light, not too heavy strokes. See, I'm all discombobulated doing this upside down. And then you can kind of feather the edge as you go down. Because if you let it dry, it's harder to feather it. So just kind of push it. Draw your line and push it. Push it good. <laughs> all the way to the edge. What is the middle part of the calla lily called? <laughs> the pollen, the the spath, the spath. Put <laughs> all these new trivia questions in here. <laughs> okay, the bulb or the spadix? Okay. Anybody's guess. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably been referring because I 
believe this is kind of a calla lily kind of flower here. It is. It is. I think it's called. And any more guesses? Everybody's like, no, I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> nope. Yeah, statics. Not the kid. Oh, it's yeah, yeah. static. So this, this is what's, what you're telling me that's what this thing is, Shelby. Right? Uh -huh. oh, okay. that's so I don't have to say the little thing hanging out. <laughs> the little thing. <laughs> yeah, that little thing that hangs out. Almost the, the flowers. flowers. I used to know all these <laughs> things. All right. There we go. All right. And so we're going to do the same thing with the other flower. Hit it on the edge. Uh, yeah, we're just going to follow that all the way, all the way down. And then we'll make a little slightly darker line here and one here. A little more water. Oops. One way brush. All right. So there's our two little stems. All right. So I'm going to add another layer. Why not? Guys, let's hit it with one more layer. Which astrological sign uh, is the water bearer? Is it Pisces, Aquarius, Cancer, or Virgo? Aquarius. Very Pisces. 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 Oh, wow. There's some really different answers there. And the answer is Aquarius. Yeah. All right. So I am picking up some white now. And I'm just going to hit the whole thing with this because my paint up here is dry. So I don't have to worry about really running into my red or it running into my white. So I'm using my number 12 brush for this because this helps me get into smaller spaces. So I got that. I got this all wet now. So now you know I'm going to employ the wet on wet technique. I am going to go and pick up a little bit of blue just on the very tip of my brush, just super small amount. And what we're doing is just kind of creating a little bit of a shadow here. So notice how small the amount of blue that I picked up, it's blending right in. And I'm making sure that it's this shape, it's shaped in a curve, in a circle, I mean. And I'm going to wipe off that excess blue now and just pick up some white and I'm going to blend that in. I'm going to blur that line. Blur the line. Okay, so now that's, we got a shadow now. So now that looks like, you know, it's taken a step away from the flower itself. And then we can take a little bit of more blue just on the very tip of the brush. And while the paint is still wet, we just kind of, oops, maybe that's not as wet as it should be. And now we can take that color and just run it along the back of the spandex. Is it spandex? Like spandex? No. <laughs> Good Lord. Like I need to remember all these terms. Spandex. Okay, thank you. Spandex. Statics. Oh, what gosh. color are you using? Blue. Just a very microscopic amount of blue on the tip of my brush. Okay. So if you put down your brush and it's too much blue, stop. 
Then after you lay down a little stripe of blue, then go back, wipe your brush off completely. Okay, and then go back and pick up some white. Because we want to blend this. We don't want you to be able to see that there's two different colors. We're creating like a little shadow to give this spadex, spadex, uh, spadex, spadex, what? <laughs> not sure how to exactly pronounce it. <laughs> Uh, that thing that's hanging out of the <laughs> flower. That thing. Um, anyway, I'm going to go back now and I'm going to pick up a little white and then I'm going to put just a tiny, 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 tiny bit of yellow on the tip of my brush. Just like enough to annoy my brush. Okay. And then I'm going to just start with about three quarters of the way up or a quarter of the way up. Just add some yellow, very tiny amount. So the trick is just a little bit at a time. Little You've bit. already painted that, correct? Yes, with white. White. Yes, yeah, that right. helps with the blending because you, when you're adding your other colors on top, you're painting wet on wet and that helps with the blending. So a little bit of yellow up here. And maybe a little right here too. Really light strokes. And then just try blending those in. Mm. Which nut is used to make dynamite? Is it almonds, pine nut, peanut, or walnuts? Which one of these guys makes the best dynamite? Peanuts. Peanuts. Who said that? <laughs> they know about vermilion. They don't know so much about dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll tell you the answer. Yes, it's peanuts. Hmm. Wow. I just guessed that. That was okay. A good guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded plausible, huh? We have to be worried when she brings peanuts to the office. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys see I'm putting a new coat of red here. And now I'm going to pick up some more of that super dark um, burgundy color that I made. Because now, since they're both wet again, I can do my wet on wet. Get that to blend really nice. And actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the side over here with some. So this helps again, give me more dimension. I'm doing the darkest color here and all around the edge. Because now I can blend these again. Sorry, that came out better. We can hear you. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Were you trying to whisper? <laughs> I did a, a starry night painting with friends, and I'm, so I'm comparing the two, and I'm I'm, I'm thinking Starry Night might be winning, but um, oh, okay. it's giving me good. Uh, positive. Rachel, I want to see. I want to see. You. I want to see. Wait, you're, you're doing two camera. painting? Are you doing? No, no, I did the Starry Night a long time ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> Rachel, turn your camera on. Let's see you. So, how do you make it more um, the 
the depth. How do you increase the depth on the flower? Beautiful. The depth. Uh, hold on, I'm going to try to see you a little bit better. That looks good, both of you. Wow. Yay! Oh, yeah. Wow. Better on the uh, computer than it does in my. Yeah, it looks better on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, make sure you guys whip out your camera and take a picture of what you, you're working on because you'll, you'll know, be pleasantly totally. surprised. That looks really good. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, but to answer better. your question and um, to create depth, you need to create darkness. So you have to have darkness and light, right? So that's yeah. why I was saying that um, for the edge of your painting or for where um, you want to blend, you have to make sure that you're doing wet on wet. So when you do your second color of paint, like for instance, so what I've done right now is I put another um, layer of that shadow wine color around the edges so that it makes it look like, you know, the, the, leaf, the calla lily is plump, but it's flat. So it's a whole trick of blending and it takes practice. So for this one in particular, I just wet this again and now I, I have a better chance of blending those two together. Got it. A gaggle. The answer's a gaggle. Okay. So yeah, what is a group of turkeys called? A clutch, a rafter, a brood, or a gaggle? A gaggle. A gaggle. gaggle. Brood. A gaggle. A gaggle. Gaggle. So yeah, the big guess is the gaggle. <laughs> it's a gaggle. Maybe it's a gaggle. And the answer is a rafter. Oh, oh gaggle for geese. Oh, yeah. I knew gaggle was for something. Some animal. <laughs> Sounds like a lot. <laughs> yes. Okay. And so in this area, too, I'm going to give it another little layer. So yeah, um, and I would suggest if you really want to fine tune, if you want to spend some more time with your painting, it can definitely use another layer. I mean, I would highly suggest that you do. Otherwise, you'll be able to see through your canvas and it's just nicer with another layer of color. So when you're doing that, just keep in mind that you should, you know, to get those effects that you want where it looks more um, dimensional, you need to be using that wet on wet technique. And you can do that with your second layer. Thank you. You're welcome. What is the most popular instrument in the United States? Is it the drums, piano, guitar, or violin? Drums. Piano. <laughs> did we get them all? <laughs> Almost, I think we did. And the answer is the piano. Oh, wow. I know, you would think it'd be a little harder to acquire. That's <laughs> true. So now I'm putting another layer here of this darker color that makes that little lighter area pop out. And then I just keep pulling it towards that spotix, spadix, spotix. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see how we how you guys did. Let's see what you're working with. So and you stopped screen I'm perfect. I don't have a gallery view. Sure you do. Sure you do. Oh. So, so you take, she's on her iPad. Oh. Uh, I usually do. You, you, so if you go to participants. Yeah. There should be a little arrow at the bottom of your iPad that'll allow you to see the next screen of, of people. Uh, 
and to take Find a it? Yeah, I because I, I want to take a group shot of your photo so I can share it with Judy. And then I like to do a little TikTok-y thing where you move your little canvases around. And don't forget to sign your work and definitely don't forget to take a picture. We love it when you hashtag us to Studio928. You're on Instagram or, or um, Facebook. Because the rest of you, can you all see us? Can you all see everybody? Can't see everybody, but I can see the sign. If you sign, if you move the, um, if you go to gallery view, if you, if you go to um, your view options and do side by side gallery, you can put the, um, you can put Cheryl on half of the screen and the rest of us on the other half of the screen. <clears throat> I don't know how it works on the iPad. Yeah, I don't. We have one here, Hudson. Oh, Usually, sure. yeah, I see it. Oh, I got it. I can't, that's his gallery, but not today. Hmm. No, me either, Nancy. I had to make, it gave me a, a it's a little bar by the larger picture, and it made me be able to make it smaller so I could see everybody. Like, I made Cheryl smaller, her whole box, and then I could see everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to make me smaller. It's cool. <laughs> I won't take offense. I scooted you over. <laughs> yeah, if you scoot her over, you should be able to see everybody. Uh, uh, all right. So, yeah, no matter where you are, hold up your, your paintings. And like I said before, um, if you want to go over some of the techniques again, I'm going to be sending video to okay. Judy, so she'll be able to share that with you. I think they look great. Awesome. Oh, I might a dozen person. <laughs> hey, uh, Lamaris, can you turn off your background? Because it's uh, We're trying to figure that out. out your, it's blocking out your um, painting. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Okay. Great. I love how these look. Okay. Here we go. Oh, that's okay, beautiful. I'm doing my tic tac thing now. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I'm nice. doing my tic tac thing now. So, wow, they look great. They look great. <laughs> okay, I got it. I'm going to do a couple more shots for people who are not. Just, do we have nine with three, six, nine? Yeah, I see nine. Yeah, Julia had to drop off. Okay. I have everybody. Million of pictures I'm taking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I got you. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was great. <laughs> so I know it's a little bit challenging. George's, you know, it's just the blending though, you know, it's just. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> once you do it once or twice, you'll be like a pro. You'll be like, I can blend that. <laughs> <laughs> Once you learn the learn how to do it all, it's 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 fun though. It's fun to sort of relax and yeah, I am relaxing. Know. Like if I didn't have to talk while I was painting this, I wouldn't say anything. Because you just go in the yeah. zone, right? I mean right. You, yeah. you can just stay there in that space that is just expressing with color and you know, it's just wonderful. <laughs> Great so anyway, so yeah, so we'll we won't keep you. Let you get on with your weekend. Thank you so much. Yeah. So it was lots of fun. Thank you. Thank you, you are us. welcome. So I'm glad you had fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, you. Chelsea, <laughs> for being in the background, doing all the extra tech and the, the uh, <laughs> trivia and all of that. We appreciate you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. She's awesome. She's awesome. That's Shelby. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. This has been wonderful. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. And as when, said, when, tell us when you started your business. When did I start it? Yeah. yeah. So um, I started it in June of 2018. Um, I was inspired uh, when I went to a self-employment in the arts conference and I saw someone pitching this idea and I thought, wine, paint, that's me. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> 
<laughs> they made that job for me. <laughs> so um, I went, I graduated that year. And then uh, my husband and I went to Cuba for two weeks. And then I came back. And right after that, I started this business. And I've been in ever since. I have loved it. Um, I, I meet wonderful people. Um, and then in February of 2020, um, I went to a brick and mortar studio. And of course, my grand opening was March 14th and oh, we wow. got shut down <laughs> a few days later. So my timing is everything, right? So, but what we did was we just pivoted. Um, I had already kind of thought about doing pain kits to go for walk-in customers. So those walk-in pain kits turned into what I'm doing right now, which is, um, you know, teaching online and shipping kits all over the country. So yeah yeah it would be nice to get back with people again but you know the really the best way to teach this is like this because you get to see up close the paint and the how to mix the colors and you can't really do that unless you have a giant big screen maybe behind you i think that's what i'm gonna do when i um go back to brick and mortar is have just like a big monitors up so people can see how the paint is mixed in that you know mm -hmm. you don't get that kind of personal one-on-one -on -one interaction that you can get, you know, being online like this. So, yeah. um, you know, it's not great what's going on in the world right now in terms of COVID, but, you know, I'm kind of glad we stumbled upon this. But it's nice that we get to do it, you know, with you across the country, you know, we wouldn't have had this opportunity. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. You know, have we not had COVID, so it's, it's a fabulous opportunity to do this with you, so, yeah. you know. A blessing in disguise in many ways so in a way yeah yeah <laughs> but, awesome so well, we're excited thank you so much for doing thank this you. so yes. so grateful thank for this you. experience thank yeah. you it's yeah. fun. You're welcome. thank you for supporting the arts you guys and uh hey. you know come, come back again and paint some more <laughs> yes we'll, we'll yeah. share the, thank we'll you share the together, so thank you you're welcome Bye. guys Take care. Stay warm, Stay Stay warm at LaGrange. Oh, Stay yeah. warm over there. Sure. It's like 11 right now, so that's not yeah. <laughs> Stay warm. Bundle up. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Bye. What you do? You're so patient. Thank you for not bugging me too much. <laughs> yeah, Georgia O'Keefe, she's stretching to uh, two and a half hours, mm -hmm. which is fine because like most of them end in two hours, like almost all of them.